Hello and welcome back to Faria's Tips and Tricks. Last time we took to the skies by building the aggressive Yellow Fury deck. This time we're building a blue combo deck called Snowstorm Combo. Snowstorm Lancer is a 5 Faria 3-5 creature that gains plus 2 attack whenever you play an event. This deck packs cheap event cards to buff our Snowstorm Lancer to deal massive damage. The majority of our creatures also have the jump ability, allowing them to be extremely mobile on the board. I've played this deck a lot and really enjoy the explosive damage it can deal with the Snowstorm Lancer. This deck was created by Nick D over at PlayFaria.com. Check out our new forum where you can share your experiences with the deck. So let's start building our blue combo deck. Here are the main creature cards in the build. Dark Stalker synergizes with the cheap event cards in the deck. With decent stats for his cost, he can be used to fight for the board or collect Feria. Aurora's Disciple is another card that synergizes with the events in the deck. Not only can you give temporary damage buffs to Snowstorm Lancer, but you can also give permanent buffs to the Disciple. The Disciple can grow into an absolute monster if left alone. Ninja Toad is personally one of my favourite blue cards, a decent body with incredible mobility due to the combination of the jump and haste mechanics. This sneaky toad has tremendous utility, he can collect Feria, kill an enemy and even cause a bit of chaos on the board by hopping around. His only drawback is a steep cost of 3 lakes but it's a fair one for such a versatile creature. Snowstorm Lancer is the star of the show. If left alone, this guy can jump next to your opponent's orb and deal massive damage after playing cheap event cards. He gains 2 attack per event played. Combine that with cheap event cards, his burst is only limited to your event cards and Feria pool. I've dealt 13 damage with this guy alone after combos of loads of cheap events. Speaking of event cards, this deck has a lot of them. I've split them into two categories, combo events and utility events. Let's go over the combo event cards. Spell Whirl is an insane card which has incredible potential. You get two of any blue cards within the existing collection. This can be creatures, events or even structures. If you get an extra event card, this fuels our Snowstorm Lancer. This card also costs zero Feria, which means you can always combo it for free. Shifting Tide is a 1 cost blue event card that gives us a choice of two outcomes. The first is to move land. This creates openings for our creatures to jump around the board. The second is to draw a card which can help us dig deeper into our deck for more events. Falcon Dive is a 1 cost neutral event card that helps fuel the combo strategy. This card buffs our Aurora's Disciple and Snowstorm Lancer, but can also snipe those pesky 1-1 Feria gatherers. The last three cards are the more expensive event cards, but they offer a lot of utility. Humbling Vision shuts down creatures with big stats. Once their attack has been dropped to 1, we can either ignore them or clear them without doing too much damage to our own forces. Battletoads gives us two frogs with jump. These two little guys can either help us deal with enemy creatures or gather Feria. Finally, Frogify is another way to shut down our opponent's threats. This is best used on creatures with last words. Once turned into a frog, they lose the abilities from their previous form. They didn't choose the frog life, the frog life chose them. Now our deck is complete, let's go over the strategy. I've played a lot of this deck and I've found you can adapt your strategy based on your opponent's deck. Against faster decks like Yellow Fury, I play more defensively, creating a wall of toads and frogs around my orb. Once I feel safer, I'll mount an attack with the Snowstorm Lancer. Against slower decks, I overwhelm the ball with frogs and force a response from my opponent. Once they've spent resources killing my little toads, I play my Snowstorm Lancer to finish the game. Alright guys, let's get into a game online with the Snowstorm combo deck created by Nick D. And a big shout out to Nick for creating this deck. Uh, this is a deck I kind of wanted to create a long time ago when I first started playing Feria, but I didn't come up with the idea for the Snowstorm Lancer. It was kind of missing something. I wanted all these frogs and all these frog cards, but it just didn't work out. But Nick D from PlayFeria.com posted this list on the forum and I started playing it a lot. And I've hit rank 16 with it pretty easily. So opening hand's not too bad. I did mention I love Ninja Toad. I think it's a fantastic card. 
But the one issue it does have, which I don't think is an issue necessarily, I think it's a balance, it's a good balance. He is quite costly on the lake side of things. So I think I might just go down the left here and try and get some Feria with the Aurora's Disciple. I said I like to adapt my strategy based on what my opponent's playing. I also adapt my strategy based on what I have in my hand. Uh, he's playing a forest, so it's a bit slower. So I'll probably play a little more aggressive than the right. And this is a card that gets sniped by the Falcon Dive. Well, 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 look who showed up. So let's take this guy out. And that's one of the, the beautiful things this card has when it interacts with the deck. It buffs the Disciple. But it's also a nice cheap way to buff our Snowstorm Lancer as well. So next turn I can play the Ninja Toad with another lake. I was kind of hoping he'd develop a few more lands up this way. Uh, so I can just hop over and do some damage. So I might not play the Ninja Toad depending mainly on what I draw next. Um, I think I'll go for the draw. See if I pick up anything else. Battle Toads. Battletoads is cool. I think I'll... Yeah, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place a lake. I've, I've did this strategy a few times with Battletoads. Drop a lake here, play the toads, and then place two uh, two land tiles up this way, and I can hop over and get the Feria. The only issue with that, it does lock him in at this pool. I do want to start getting him up. I guess it'll depend on what my opponent plays this turn. But that's the general strategy I have going forward. So now he started to develop up that side as well. Go to the last nightmare, take him care of the disciple, which is great because that was six Feria for a free Feria creature. Uh, he was very buffed up, I'm not going to lie, but overall I'm pretty happy with that. So let's gather even more Feria. Uh, let's have a look here. Don't know whether it's worth playing Battletoad because I don't get the effect. I can set him up to hop next turn. If I play him by here, which is the only tile I can play him on apart from this one, but this one's too far back, uh, he can hop a little bit. I think I'll hold off on the battle toads for now. I don't feel like I need them just yet. I really want him to develop land down this side so I can punish this uh, fortune hunter. He's going for a bloom sprite. So straight away, the only creatures this guy is playing have one health. So these, if I had drawn more falcon dives, they would have been a lot better gets a demon wing as well but battle toads can take care of these very easily have no fear I do want a lake tile this guy is becoming a bit of an issue hmm So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap two land tiles up here, jump over, get the Feria, hit the guy, play my first Ninja Toad, hop him over ready to jump up this way. And now I think I'll save the rest of my Feria. So I could just keep developing stuff and throwing stuff on the board, but I want to play these creatures uh, not so passively. I want them to have an I want them to have a goal. That is it for our third guide covering the aggressive might of yellow. Thank you for watching and check back at playferia.com for more Ferias tips and tricks videos. I'm going to have to frogify that. Which is a shame. But let's get our disciple down first. Play him right next to him. Let's see what we get. A frog. An Archon. I quite like Archon. I've used him in uh, other decks in the past. He's not too bad. 
Let's frogify this guy. Hop over, gain the Feria. I don't want these two trading into the Disciple. I don't think I want to expend using too many to Ninja Toads at this point. So I think I'll deal with this guy um, and then I'll develop another Toad down here. I want to I want to develop him when I'm close and just get that plus four attack and put on a lot of pressure. This guy has become a little bit of an issue over time. I wanted to deal with him earlier, but I was kind of hoping he would develop around uh, on my side, but instead I responded by going up on the right side, getting the battle toads, um, the frogs and the battle toads to gain some more Feria crystals. He doesn't develop any land this turn, so he goes for another last nightmare on the disciple. Getting really good value from these disciples. Triton Chef. Now Triton Chef is a card that I've put in place of the Dark Stalker. Now when I make these guides, I want to make them quite accessible to newer players. So I don't want to have a lot of rarer cards. But in this version of the deck, which as I was going to mention while playing in this playthrough that you can add kind of the tweaks I've made is I've taken out the Dark Stalkers and I've added two Triton Chefs which also give the Banquet which is another event which synergizes with our deck but I've also added Aurora herself but you can turn a 2-2 Toad into a 6-6 with Jump and that is just too good to pass up in my opinion so that's what I've been doing so I'm going to be really sneaky now I'm going to drop a Ninja Toad He's going to hop over here, I'm going to drop a water tile, then I'm going to play a big Archon. And this is what I said earlier, which I was going for. To see if he has a response to that. He's already used two last nightmares. Uh, he can't use Choking Sand on this guy, he's got too much attack. Could do it on the Ninja Toad, but I'm pretty sure the Wrangler is going to go into that guy. Oh, I could have hop. I did. I didn't misplay there. Unfortunately, I could have hopped my top frog over to gain one extra feria. Oh man, <laughs> what did he get in his hand with plus six plus six? I haven't used this card personally, so I don't know how good it is. But I guess it could be incredible. I guess you want something of a low cost, uh, so you can play it out quite cheaply. But that did cost most of his feria. So what can he play now with two Feria? He hasn't developed any land, so he can still gain a Feria, which he does. He might not have anything. Oh, he, give, he buffs this guy up to deal with my ninja. So another mistake that was made by me, if I, I didn't move my frog up to gain the pool, if I had, he would be in position to take out this guy. Let's, let's gain the extra feria. I think I have the humble envisions. I don't think I've got much choice. I will, however, develop a chef. I think I'll just play everything at this point. Get a chef, get this banquet ready for next turn. Humble envisions him down so he can't attack. Uh, well, clear the Archon without a bit of help. I mean, this 7-7 is fantastic, but he's not doing anything. He's just sat there gathering Feria. Very passive. You should be utilizing the stats of this creature to get good trades off, which is one of the, one of the strengths of green, uh, getting those big bulky creatures and being able to get like two for ones, three for ones. So that's a good card to gain from the... I can't remember the name of the card that he used, the six Feria, gain plus six, plus six. So if he does gain uh, a draw an event card without me dealing with this, it becomes an <laughs> it becomes an eight eleven with taunt and charge. It's pretty scary stuff. Oh, and I get the frog fight off the top. Wow. <laughs> oh man. I do feel I do feel sad for this guy. Right, so how much damage can I do this turn? I can do ten. I might just go. For, I've, so he can charge if he draws an event, and he can clear him. 
Uh, I think I'm going to take the risk here. I think we're just going to go for the lethal for next turn. Move him over. Hop this guy around, clear that. And what do I want to do here? So I'm going to have enough berry to play Frogify next turn anyway. I could draw a card. Oh, it doesn't matter. He's conceded. So didn't have an answer uh, to my 8-4, which I gained off the, uh, the Spell World, which I was talking about earlier in the guide, which is very powerful. So this just goes to show how much reach this deck have. I, I didn't even use a Snowstorm Lancer, but the combination of plenty of frogs and the spell will picking up some good stuff uh, allowed me to win the game that wraps up our final guide to the tips and tricks series i hope they have helped you settle into the world of feria thank you for watching and get involved at playferia.com where you can find guides and videos but also interact with the community through our forums i hope you enjoyed the series so until next time take care and goodbye